Okay, so now we're going to talk about a counting technique called permutations. Um, I sometimes feel like permutations is an unnecessary technique to teach because um, a lot of the problems of permutations can be easily done with fundamental counting rule. Um, but let's just talk about it anyways because it's a topic that's covered in a lot of courses. So we have an example problem we'll work from. It says 10 people are running a race, gold, silver, and bronze. Medals will be awarded. How many groups of winners are possible? So what we want to do is figure out, you know, uh, how many different groups of three people could win the race. So we're going to give them awards, so there's actually an implied order. When you're working with permutations, order is important. Let me just explain why this is true. Let's say I'm going to form um, a committee of three people, and these three people, say I'm going to pick three students of mine, and these students are going to go to the faculty senate and represent my class. They're going to tell um, the faculty senate how great their experience in Stats 1 was with Professor McGuckin. Okay, so um, let's say I pick student uh, Angela, Bobby, and Sally to represent the class. Would it be any different to say I picked Sally, Angela, and Bobby to represent the class? I don't think so. I, I think that's the same thing, right? It's the same three people representing the class. There's no difference whether I say them in this order or in this other order, right? It's the same thing. Okay, now compare that to this idea with the race. If I'm giving away medals, gold, silver, and bronze medals, let's say I have Angela, uh, Bobby, and Carlos running the race, right? And I put them in this order, it says what? Angela got the gold, Bobby got the silver, Carlos got the bronze medal. If I switch the order, and I do like this, now things have changed, right? It's different to say ABC or CAB, because now Carlos gets the gold medal. Angela gets the silver and Bobby gets the bronze. So the order now has changed in a meaningful way. It's not the same group of people. So these groups have to be counted separately because the order is dependent upon uh, which medal they get, right? Okay, so because of that, we have um, basically this idea in the problem. The idea is that among 10 people, we want to pick first three people to win the race, but then we want to kind of scramble up those three people and all the different ways they can be scrambled up to count all the unique ways that they can win either gold, silver, or bronze. So essentially we're drawing a subset, three people to win, from a set of ten. That's sort of the idea in permutations. You're grabbing a subset from a bigger set, but we have an order when it comes out is important. So you know, if we list them in one order and then we change the order, that matters. Okay, so that's the mark of a permutation. So the first idea, you're grabbing a subset from a larger set. But the result of that selection, the order matters. The way in which you select them matters. If it's ABC, it's different from BAC, is different from CAB. So the order makes a difference. All right, and that's what you see in this problem. Okay, so how do you solve it? Well, in my opinion, personally, it's easy to work with this using the fundamental counting rule. In other words, we're going to say there are three positions in the race, the gold medal position, the silver, the bronze, and you have 10 people that could win the race potentially. So I can say for the first medal, the gold medal, how many people are available to win that medal? You would say, well, there are 10 people that could win that medal. So the number 10 would go here. How many people are available to win the silver medal? Well, after I've awarded the gold medal, there will only be nine runners left. So I only have nine choices for people to give the silver medal to. And then after I've given away those first two medals, I will have eight runners who haven't got a medal yet. So I'll have eight choices to give away the bronze medal to. That'd be all the possible ways that I could award medals in the race. And then, of course, it's just the product 10 times 9 times 8 that gives you the solution. Okay, so um, we can do 10 times 9, which of course is 90, and then times 8 is 720, right? Okay, so 720 different possible ways to award these medals. All right, now there is a formula for permutation, though, that um, you know, kind of shows how it can be worked out from start to finish. I'm just going to express that formula briefly, although I think I've shown here that the fundamental counting rule can solve the problem. The formula would be written this way. You start out with a big number here, 10. You'd write the letter P to represent permutations. And then since there are three medals to be awarded, since we'll be grabbing groups of three to win the race, we're going to put the number three here. And this says 10 permutations of three. And then essentially, what you do to solve it from there is you apply this formula. And the formula takes the first number here, puts it on top with a factorial symbol next to it, and on the bottom you put the difference between two, these two numbers 
factorial. So in other words, we're basically going to do this. We're going to say the first guy factorial divided by the difference, which would be 7, factorial. And then to see why that is actually the same as what we have here, um, what we have to do is expand that factorial out. So let's just start back from this 10 factorial phase and 7 factorial. Let's show why that's actually the same. A little bit of mathematics here we're going to work with. So what you would do is you would go with the definition of 10 factorial and you'd realize that that means really what? 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. I'm going to stop here and just put the factorial single back in knowing that you know to go further that would be 7 times 6 times 5. That's what that's representing right? All the way down to 1. So I can just stop there so I don't have to keep writing it all out. And I'm stopping there because I know that there's a 7 factorial at the bottom. And since these are all multiplied up top we can just divide off that 7 factorial, we can cancel it out. And when we do that, we see we end up with the product 10 times 9 times 8. So this is another way to do the problem, and it's often taught this way in classes. For my personal taste, I feel like the fundamental counting rule adequately solves the problem, and I think that if you were comfortable with that rule, you would naturally come along and try it on this problem and get it right if you used it in that way. And so I think, I don't, for me, I don't feel like this is an absolute necessity to use in class. I think you can stick with the fundamental counting rule, recognizing that it will work for these problems as well as the ones we did earlier.